But there are other people who say, no, it's not really the bankers. The real force behind what's going on in the world today is an organization known as the Council on Foreign Relations. Because you see, most of the leading bankers of the United States just happen to belong to the Council on Foreign Relations. But here the industrialists belong as well, and the people who control uh, so much of our government, in fact. Since 1953, all but one Secretary of State have come from the Council on Foreign Relations. All but one Deputy Secretary of State have come from the CFR. All but one Director of the CIA and every Chairman uh, of the Federal Reserve System and six of our last nine Presidents. Certainly it must be the Council on Foreign Relations. That is the center of everything going on in the world today. <clears throat> in 1979, no less a person than Barry Goldwater, in his book With No Apologies, commented uh, on this fact, and he noted that when we change presidents, it is understood to mean that voters are ordering a change in national policy. Since 1945, three different Republicans have occupied the White House for a period of 16 years. Four Democrats have held this most powerful post the world has to offer for a period of 17 years. With the exception of the first seven years of the Eisenhower administration, there's been no appreciable change in foreign or domestic policy direction. When a new president comes on board, there's a great turnover in personnel, but no change in policy. An example, during the Nixon years, Henry Kissinger, CFR member and Nelson Rockefeller's protege, was in charge of foreign policy. When Jimmy Carter was elected, Kissinger was replaced by Zygmunt Brzezinski, CFR member and David Rockefeller's protege. Now you'd think if a person of Barry Goldwater's stature uh, wrote about such things that everybody would hear about it. But amazingly enough, these things are seldom, if ever, quoted, uh, even by many of our so-called conservative leaders. Now there are other people who will tell you, well, uh, this is all well and true, but the real force in the world is not the Council on Foreign Relations, it is the Bilderbergers. And of course, the Bilderbergers are made up not only of the leaders of the United States, uh, but the leaders uh, of Europe as well. And you'll find in the Bilderbergers why the leading bankers of Europe, uh, the leading socialists of Europe, the leading capitalists of Europe, strange to find the capitalists and socialists working together in an organization. Uh, many of the leaders uh, of the um, uh, various political parties, the people who are about to become president or be out to become prime minister. In fact, it is said that Bill Clinton was actually selected at a Bilderberger meeting back in 1991 and 1992. He was selected to replace uh, George Bush. Now, it is not coincidence that both George Bush and Bill Clinton, who ran for the presidency, one a Republican, one a Democrat in 1992, all three, of, both of them belonged to the CFR at one time, uh, the Bilderbergers and the Trilateral Commission. Well. Phyllis Schlafly uh, wrote a book in 1964, it's called A Choice Not an Echo. And in that book, she said this. Several years ago, the author of this book stumbled on a clear evidence of a very powerful, that very powerful men actually do meet to make plans which are kept secret from the American citizens. While visiting at Sea Island, Georgia, this writer discovered the details of a secret meeting on nearby St. Simons Island, Georgia, held at the King and Princess Hotel, February of 1957. The most elaborate precautions were taken to prevent Americans from knowing who attended this secret meeting or what transpired there. And then she goes on to say, the participants at the St. Simons meeting were some of the biggest names in American politics, business, and the press. As described by an eyewitness observer at that meeting, those who came were not the heads of state, they were those who gave orders to the heads of state. In other words, the kingmakers. Well, there are others who say, well, you know, that's all very well and good, uh, but it's really not the Bilderbergers, it's an organization known as the Trilateral Commission, because the Trilateral Commission is actually made up not only of the leaders of Europe and the United States, it's also made up of the leaders of Asia as well. In fact, Barry Goldwater on page 280 of his book, with no apologies, basically said this. He's talking about the implications of Governor Rockefeller's presentation have become concrete proposals advanced by David Rockefeller's newest international cabal. A cabal is sort of a secret organization of the Trilateral Commission. Whereas the Council on Foreign Relations is distinctly national in membership, the Trilateral Commission is international. 
Representation is allocated equally to Western Europe, Japan, and the United States. It is intended to be the vehicle for national, multinational consolidation of commercial and banking interests by seizing control of the political government of the United States. Let me read what Barry Goldwater said again. It is intended to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of the commercial and banking interests. In other words, all throughout the world, they're going to seize banking and commercial interests, but they're going to do it by seizing control of the political government of the United States. Well, that's a pretty strong statement. You would think that people would be talking about that. Anybody want to seize control of this political government of the United States, that suggests they really want a dictatorship, or maybe, maybe they already have a dictatorship. Well, there are others who are going to say it's really not, not uh, this organization you're talking about. It's really something called the Club of Rome. And you can actually pull this logo down off the internet site where we got it. <clears throat> and what I'm about to show you uh, comes from the Club of Rome's internet site uh, on the web. And basically, uh, their statement is uh, that their purpose to, is to act as an international non-official catalyst of change. Now. This is taken from their website below. Another new development was the decision to invite prominent world figures who share the club's concern to become honorary members, although their positions may prevent them from taking a public stance, as in the case of the Queen of the Netherlands or the King and Queen of Spain. They can and do give valued moral support. Among the others are former President Gorbachev, former President Richard von Weizsäcker of Germany, the first president of newly democratic Czechoslovakia, Václav Havel, or the president of Hungary, the president of Argentina, etc., etc. Here, some of the most wealthy and powerful men in the world meet to plan the future. Among the leaders of the Club of Rome is a man named Maurice Strong. Now, are those of you who... Um, uh, have studied this will well recognize that Marie Strong is one of the most powerful men in the world, but he's always working within the shadows. A man who uh, never graduated from high school and yet uh, by the time he was 21 had a very important position in international finance. By the time he was 31 he headed one of the large financial corporations uh, and financial advisory companies, uh, a multi-billionaire, uh, the man who is today the senior advisor to Kofi Annan, the Secretary General of the United Nations. Now you probably believe Kofi Annan is the Secretary General and leads the United Nations, but he is simply a figurehead for the man who really runs the UN. His name is Maurice Strong, a member of the Club of Rome. And Maurice Strong, uh, of course, it was the uh, first Secretary General of the Earth, First Earth Summit in 1972, uh, the second uh, Secretary General of the Earth Summit in 1992, and the Secretary General of the Third Earth Summit in 1997. Uh, he has, of course, uh, put out the Global Biodiversity Assessment Report, which really calls for the total disruption of Western civilization. He's been quoted as saying, the only way to save the Earth is to destroy Western civilization. Uh, he has a little f farm in Colorado, it's called Baca, uh, about 100,000 acres there, uh, where occultists from all over the world meet. Uh, they have witches, they have uh, medicine men, they have shamans, they have Satanists, they have Shirley MacLaine. Uh, according to an article in West Magazine, why uh, men like Henry Kissinger and, uh, and Robert McNamara, you remember the man who sent our boys to Vietnam to fight for 10 years but never allowed to win. Uh, they're not infrequent visitors at, uh, at Baca. Uh, Marie Strong's wife uh, happens to be a witch and she prays the sun up every morning. A strange situation that this man is a great capitalist, is working so closely with uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. In fact, the two of them are writing something known as the Earth Charter, a plan for the world and for your future. And you might, want, might wonder why uh, the former head of the Soviet KGB, uh, the so former dictator of Russia, is working with a capitalist uh, to reshape the world. And yet, of course, is the more you study this, you begin to find there may be very little difference between the leaders of the communist nations and the leaders of the capitalist nations.